Hey guys, it's Roger with Roger's Reviews, and today we want to talk about um, as far as loader truck, trailers, hauling debris, um, how to uh, basically help close a sale, how to make it easier on yourself, and basically uh, <clears throat> make your jobs a little easier and just make yourself more efficient. Um, as you know, I've had a tree service for 20 years plus, and I've had uh, dump trailers, I've had loader trucks, multiple loader trucks, uh, you name it, we've, you know, we've hired out debris hauling, we've had chippers, chip trucks, and now that I've kind of went through the full gamut, <clears throat> I figured out that uh, the money's in your smaller jobs, <laughs> in your, and uh, it's not really worth having all this big equipment especially when you're a smaller company so um, I went through about three loader trucks I went through uh, two three chippers um, and basically three chip trucks if you include the loader truck with that and <clears throat> now we're in the process of basically uh, we do smaller jobs and we have a smaller crew and we haul everything without chipping it um, we developed a process to where um, we custom build a trailer to haul the debris. So if, uh, <clears throat> if we have a smaller job, we can basically haul our mini skid, haul our um, small stump grinder and all our debris on one trailer and pull it with one truck. Um, we're either pulling it with a bucket truck or we're pulling it with like an F-250 four-wheel drive. Um, with helper springs so <clears throat> we've developed this process to where um, basically we have minimized our hauling fees so what we do is uh, <clears throat> when I estimate the jobs um, I charge the customer 250 if we can haul it away in a trailer and then I charge them 500 if we have to call a loader truck to help offset the cost because what we do is if it's a smaller job and we can fit it in the trailer, we just haul it back to our shop and then we make a pile there. And then when the pile accumulates enough to have a loader truck come, then we just have the loader truck come to the shop. So we can get anywhere from two to four to five to six, seven jobs um, all uh, picked up all at once at our shop. So it cuts down a lot on our loader truck fees. <clears throat> Um, also, too, when you have um, like a little bit larger jobs that you can't haul in your trailer, sometimes I try to pass the savings on to the customer because, um, say for example, the customer hires you to uh, take down a tree. Well, they have a few more trees they'd like to take down, but they don't feel like it's in their budget to do so at that time. So what you can tell the customer is, listen, um, you know, the debris we have picking up now is too big for the trailer, but we're still going to have to call a loader truck and they're going to charge the same price if we put one tree in it or we put three or four trees in it. Um, and then for an extra hundred bucks, you can go up to like a 70 yard. So, you know, once you're at the point where you're calling a truck, you might as well go call the biggest one you can find because normally the cost between like a 40 yard truck and a 70 yard truck is like a hundred bucks, 150 bucks. So. It's in your best interest to get the most for your money, especially with the customer. So, um, also too, if you're doing jobs that are close together, if you have a customer, and then the neighbor comes over, or somebody in a, you know, nearby area, and you can do two jobs at once, um, you can try to uh, persuade the customers to uh, split the cost of the loader truck. So a lot of times this will help close the sale. If you tell them, like I did a job yesterday, or an estimate, and uh, the customer's like, well, you know, can't we just haul it away? Or, they, you know, can you cut up into small pieces? Can you divide it up so the garbage man can get it? And under almost any circumstance, you do not want to accept this because it's 10 times more work for the tree service to basically cut it up into firewood or cut it up into small parcels and basically stack it somewhere or make it small enough to where the customer can handle it. <clears throat> so um, I always try to talk the customer out of that because you're going to end up spending 
10 times more amount of energy and time making the material small enough to where they can get rid of it the, themselves, especially if they're hauling it to the street. I mean, most customers, they don't have the equipment or saws and stuff to cut it up, so they're gonna expect you to do that. So, the customer yesterday was um, basically telling me the same thing. He's like, well, how many truckloads or you know, pickup truck beds would it take to get rid of the material? Because he didn't want to spend the $500. I'm like, well, you're not going to spend $500 because your neighbor's getting some work done too, so we can split the cost of the loader truck down to like 250 bucks. He's like, well, 250 is still kind of high. I'm like, well, how many, you know, how long do you think it would take to haul it away in a pickup truck? I'm like, well, probably three or four or five loads, and then you got to figure the, you know, cost to cut it up, the, uh, you know, the wear and tear, the time, the effort, um, you know, and the customer doesn't want to spend, you know, a whole weekend or two weeks uh, taking it to the to the dump, and then um, also too, wherever they leave it, if you leave it on the grass, it's going to kill the grass before anybody can haul it away anyway. So, I think it's just in your best interest to talk the customer um, into a loader truck, and also too, it saves so much time because <clears throat> over the years we used to do everything ourselves, and so every job became all day so basically <clears throat> you know once you get done with the job you know our our dump is like an hour anywhere from an hour one way to 45 minutes one way and that's just getting there if that's if there's no traffic so after every job you got to add at least anywhere from two to three hours onto your day if you're riding, driving the truck. And so since we're a small company, I would end up driving the truck. And I ended up um, basically uh, stocking up the material at our, um, at our shop. And then eventually I would go and dump the debris. But you're handling the debris twice. And then also too, a lot of that debris, if you have a loader truck, it accumulates very quickly and then it's an eyesore. Um, if you're accumulating it through a trailer, which is smaller, every time you get a loader truck um, load, you can get rid of it. So it doesn't, you know, people aren't going to complain as much uh, with like one load. And, you know, if you get four or five loads built up, then it's going to, the city's going to call and then it's a fire hazard and then, you know, all this other nonsense and you're going to end up probably losing your spot. Another thing <clears throat> you can do is um, build a small burn pit or dig a hole. And if you have enough room, you can cut down a lot on your debris. So like the small brush, the leaves and stuff like that can all be burnt. <clears throat> and if you have, even if you have like a small, um, you know, stove or burn barrel or a couple burn barrels, you, you'd be amazed how much you can get rid of just by burning it. Because a lot of the places that, uh, that the loader trucks are taking it to, they do the same thing. They're burning it too. So. Uh, I would rather burn it on site um, than pay somebody 10 times as much to drive it somewhere else to burn. Um, also too, we uh, separate all our firewood and smoker wood. So basically uh, we, we have one pile of uh, you know, oak, one pile of blackjack, one pile of maple, one pile of cherry. And then on the other side of the yard, we have one pile of debris. So you can either burn that debris or pay someone to haul it off. And if you can afford to get in an incinerator, that's even 10 times better because you can eliminate like 99% of all your material with an incinerator. Um, you just gotta make sure it's set up to where there's no smoke um, or very little smoke coming out. But <clears throat> I think that's it. If you guys have any questions or comments, um, just leave it in the comment section and I'll try to get back with you as soon as possible. But um, basically, we're staying small and keeping it all. <laughs> um, I found out we had as many as 20 employees at one time, and we had two or three crews working at one time, and uh, it was just a big headache. So I found that uh, it's more enjoyable to have a smaller business and be more involved. Um, so basically, I, I, the only thing I do recommend as far as that goes, is an answering service or someone to answer your phones. An answering service for us is like 150 to 200 a month. They'll answer like, I think it's like up to 150 calls a month, and they will uh, send you a text 
in an email and basically don't answer the phone exactly the same. They answer our phone, uh, thank you for calling Tree Life 1, 584 Tree, where we go out and limb for you. What is your tree concern today? They get their name, address, phone number, and also how they heard about us. And that right there is money. That is worth their weight in gold. And so basically, they're operating 24 seven, so there's live operators. And what's nice too is if you can find a local, uh, it's kind of hard, there's not many left, but a, a local operating uh, answering service, because then you can actually go down there and talk to people and have a relationship with them and get things done, because there's small changes you're gonna have to make and tweaks that you're gonna have to make down the road. And uh, it's gonna pay off if you are able to have a personal relationship with the person who owns or runs that business because <clears throat> most of these answering services are <clears throat> out of state or maybe not even in the country. So you're gonna have very little um, leverage to or access to the people that actually make decisions. So anyway, it's this is over 10 minutes and I'm wrapping it up. But uh, this is Roger with Tree Life Tree Service, 584 Tree, where we go out and live for you. If you guys have any questions, uh, comments, please leave them. Please like and subscribe and share. And uh, we're almost to a million views. I'm hoping to get to a million views by the end of the month. So if you don't mind, help us out. Have a great day.